Hi everybody, this is Idaho Gunny with Rapid Fire Radio. And you know what? Like I said in the little video that we posted on Facebook here shortly, I am here right now with Chris uh, Kinston. 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 <laughs> I can always do that. Sorry. And we are downtown Rapid City here at Main, Main Street Square. And you know, he came into town. This is his second trip here. And he came into town on August 15, 2015. And he accepted the presidential nomination for the Veterans Party of America last last August and everything. So um, it's it's an honor to be able to introduce to you one of our presidential candidates. So why don't we um, why don't we start off with why don't you kind of give everybody a little uh, description on what the Veterans Party of America is and uh, what what the what the goal is. For, for America's future. All right, Veterans Party of America was founded December 2013 on the eve that Congress passed its budget at the expense of veterans benefits, cost of living adjustment, pay and allowances, and military pay and benefits. At that time, a group of veterans looking at the bipartisan support that passed that legislation finally accepted that neither party represented us anymore. So the group met and discussed possible alternatives and ultimately decided to establish a new independent political party based on the constitutional values that every veteran swears their life to support and defend. Um, veterans Party of America is not an exclusive political party only for veterans. It is open to all Americans. So all Americans who share in our constitutional values and our oath to support and defend the Constitution are welcome to participate either as candidates, as leaders, or simply as members. But the party is by all means open to all Americans. Absolutely. Now, um, I have here, now it says that there are three rules for decision making. Can you explain to everybody what these three rules are? If I can remember them, it's been a while since I've slept. Um, the first rule is, is it constitutional? Plain and simple. If it is a constitutional proposition, then we would support it for step one. Step two, is it paid for with existing funds? Meaning, we do not go further in debt to do anything new. If it's not paid for with existing funds, we figure out a way to pay for it, or we don't do it. And step three is, do your constituents want it? So, if we satisfy all three of those conditions, it's constitutional, it's paid for with existing funds, and our constituents want it, we vote yes. If it fails to meet any of those conditions, we vote no. Okay, and you know what? I do know that the Veterans Party of America is not just for veterans. No, it is not. It is for all Americans. It is. It's for all Americans, and you know, constant, and you know, everybody, everybody that's an American, they they are constitutionalists. If they know their constitution, and 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 education is key too. To be this. an American, you almost have to be a constitutionalist. If you're opposed to the constitution, you certainly can't understand what it's intended to do. There's a misconception, I think, among some people that the Constitution provides our rights. It does not provide our rights. The Constitution exists to protect our rights, our human given rights, from government intervention. It is a safety against an oppressive government. So to say you don't support the Constitution or that you feel the Constitution is an outdated document is to say that you don't support the protection of your human rights from government interference. And um, now, th your leaders, okay, you, you say that you guys need a, a leaders in state and county and county levels and everything. And, you know, I mean, it does say that no political experience is ac actually necessary. No political yes. experience is actually preferred. Preferred. Because major party politics has become a very corrupt business. At this point, the longer a person serves 
as a representative of people for a major party, the more likely it is that they have been corrupted by that service. So there is no political experience necessary. Um, and yes, we absolutely, we need people in positions of uh, party leadership, membership, and certainly as candidates. Hey, now, um, now with uh, the serving lawmakers and everything, uh, it says here that the leadership of, of the veteran base of your party, okay, can you explain to um, everybody, you know, a little bit about yourself and your running mate and your, your history, your military history? Uh, I am a 13 and a half year veteran of the United States Air Force, all served on active duty. I deployed once in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. I was fortunate never to be shot at. I don't apologize for that. Uh, my running mate, Deacon Taylor, is a seven year uh, Army veteran. He served at one time at the Special Warfare School. Uh, I'm not going to go into any particular detail about what he did, but he is a very capable individual. Between the two of us, we have a combined total of over 20 years military experience, all on active duty, representing the Air Force and the Army, which is by far more than you will find on any other major party ticket. And one thing that one thing that um, st stood out <clears throat> amongst a lot of other things is that the Veterans Party of America has the mission of placing great Americans in office and that will not forget their oath of the Constitution. And that right there is, is very poignant and very significant. And it should not, it, it, it should not be any that. And that, um, that's, that's the, one of the things that um, I guess my, is missing um, in today's, um, uh, how do I put this, political race in some areas because it's like all this other stuff keeps overshadowing, you know, the very foundation that this country was built on and what our what our forefathers and everything laid out for us as the guidelines and everything to protect us from, you know, foreign and domestic and and to keep the government from from superseding their position. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. The original foundation of the Constitution, the the articles of the Constitution are there to specifically list what the responsibilities of the presidency, the Congress, and the Supreme Court are. They're numbered. They are enumerated. And those are the enumerated powers of federal government. That's it. That's technically all they are allowed to do. In addition to the amendments that have been passed since then, either granting further restriction or further permission, such as the income tax amendment, was, was an amendment to the Constitution, which granted the federal government the ability to collect income tax. Um, but the ninth amendments are both very specific in the fact that anything that exceeds those enumerated powers is the responsibility of the state government and ultimately the American people. The supreme authority in this nation is not the federal government. It's not the president, it's not the Congress, it's not the Supreme Court. The supreme authority in this nation is you, me, her. Every American is the supreme authority. The people. The people. The people. Yep. And ultimately, you exercise that authority by casting a vote. If you look at the 2012 presidential election, 219 million Americans were of legal voting age for that election. 66 million voted for Barack Obama. 61 million voted for Rick Mitt Romney. A combined total of less than 200,000 Americans voted for third party or independent candidates. So spare me the whole third parties decide elections thing. No, they don't. What decided that election was the 92 million Americans who did not cast a vote. 92 million Americans. The mandate in this country was not Barack Obama, it was not Mitt Romney, it was surrender to people who cared enough. Now, when um, through this process and uh, this next six months ahead of you, what what are your goals for and what what, what do you want 
Over the next six months, my primary goal is exposure to be seen, to continue to disseminate this message and let people understand and know that there are options beyond Republicans and Democrats, and mainstream media sources will not tell you about it. They know about us. They've received our press releases, they've received our messages, our emails, our inquiries, our demands for some kind of coverage or mention. At this point, now, eight months into this campaign, they delete our messages, they disregard our messages, but they still refuse to discuss us, and they still refuse to allow the American people the knowledge that we need to So, media exposure is our biggest concern. The American people need to know they have another choice. Now, um, earlier, uh, I know that on your itinerary that was, you know, that the, the outlined itinerary that was on the um, the notice, the, the announcement for the, you being in town, that you uh, you did a radio interview and a news interview, correct? I've had a very busy day, yes. I did an independent media interview this morning at 3.30 a.m. On what channel was that? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> it, it was an internet radio show. Uh, it was called Off the Beat Path. I'm not even entirely sure I haven't seen a link yet, but if I get a link, it will be updated on the campaign Facebook site, and I'll make it available to everyone. Uh, let's see, we also did a radio on KIMM, radio here in Rapid City, South Dakota this morning. Uh, we also did an interview with the Rapid City Simple, is that the name of the Journal. 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 Rapid City Journal. Uh, the local newspaper and one of the television stations. I, it's all a blur to me now. It's been a busy day. K L K E V N. K E V N came and interviewed us, uh, and now sitting down with Rapid Fire Radio. Yeah. So very very busy day for us. Uh, oh, very and, exciting. And 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 also uh, you guys went down and you guys were down at Police Post twelve seventy three. VFW Post 1273. Yes, located at 420 Main Street here in uh, just outside, right off of downtown Rapid City and everything. If you are if you want to come and have a good time, have good food, and enjoy awesome company uh, with uh, the men and women and the heroes of our nation and everything that are reside here in this area, you need to go down there and everything down to the VFW. And I mean, they have, they have really good food and it's just such a comfortable atmosphere. And, open to the public and whatever you spend down there ultimately goes back into helping to foster the programs in the DFW. That's where I met her. <laughs> That's where I met her. Um, so you know what? Again, everybody, I just want to go over this. Um, now, this is uh, he is the presidential candidate for the Veterans Party of America. And Chris, why don't you give somebody, uh, give the people your information, your uh, your website information, and uh, just a little, uh, some more detail regarding um, you and your running mate and everything like that. And let everybody know, you know, uh, what what you have in store over the next, like, you know, a few weeks and stuff. If you're, cause, you know, uh, we have people that watch this stuff that aren't just from here, from all over different parts of the country and stuff. So. Can you let us know what, well, what your plans are, your next stop is and stuff? Uh, we are right now working on stops through probably the Appalachian states will be next and possibly up in the Great Lakes. Nothing formalized yet, but that's where we're looking at our next round of stops. Uh, we just completed stops in Nevada, Washington State, uh, Montana, and here now in South Dakota. I uh, do intend a couple of stops on the way home to Texas, possibly Kansas and Oklahoma, and maybe one in Louisiana, we're still talking about that. But uh, trying to be home in time for my daughter's high school graduation next week. So oh, congratulations. I am on a schedule. I do have commitments and family does come first. But that's how it is with us, too. It's uh, family first and everything. Um, so why don't you let everybody know your website information for you okay where they can get your journal information and then we'll go over um how they can uh go and look up the veterans party of america and that's for more information on this campaign that the mainstream media refuses to tell you about please go to my campaign website 
Chris Keniston, that's C-H-R-I-S-K-E-N-I-S-T-O-N, 2016.com. For more information on Veterans Party of America, go to veteranspartyofamerica.org. Uh, you can find information there about the party, its history, its platform, my website. You can find about my personal biography, uh, my running mate Deacon Taylor's biography, our platform for the campaign and uh, quite a few media sources that we have linked and made available past interviews and things like that. And you can also you can also look up information on uh, one of the social media sites on Facebook and all you have to do is type in Veterans Party of America. And you know what? The Veterans Party of America, it's about loyalty to the people and not the party. Uh, we are, again, we are a constitutional party. We are a centrist party, middle of the road, where most Americans live. And we are a solutions-based party. We don't get hung up in the politics, the left versus right, dividing people up. We are about getting things done and fixing the problems that are plaguing this country. No excuses. And Just get the job done. Yes, and you guys are grassroots, and you guys do stand for political accountability. Accountability. Absolutely. Clean campaigns. There's no real mudslinging. If, I mean, you guys base everything on facts. And what history has shown and what history is proving and what what is happening right now and everything and what could happen in the future. And you guys, and this is a zero corporate influence. Zero. Every, we are 100% volunteer. Nobody in this party gets paid for the work that they do. Nobody in leadership, not me as a candidate, no one takes money from this effort. Everything that we receive goes directly toward advertising and expenses. And 100% uh, voter supported. We don't take money from PACs, we don't take money from corporations. They have nothing to gain by supporting us unless they support our agenda to represent the American people. Wonderful. And I did forget to mention, the Veterans Party of America and this campaign are both very active on social media. Um, if you go to Facebook or Twitter, interact with Veterans Party of America or Chris Keniston for President 2016, Someone will answer your questions. Someone will respond to you. And if you go to my page, it will be me personally. I am the only administrator of that page. I am the only one with rights to answer questions. So if you go there and you want to talk to Sid Buddy and get answers, you're talking to me. That's how it should be. Now that people want to ask you a question, you answer people. I answer questions. I'm accountable. I hold myself accountable now, not after I get elected. Well, everybody, so please go check out the Veterans Party of America at www.veteranspartyofamerica.org or you can locate it on Facebook, on social media, and just type in Veterans Party of America, all right? And kind of do your research and, like I always say, educate yourself so you can actually learn and experience and participate in a change in America, a change back to what it should be, what it was, and what it will be. Uh, one other point I probably should make, since I'm here in South Dakota, ballot access for third parties and independent candidates is not automatic, like it is for Republicans and Democrats. Ballot access is an extreme challenge. It's a battle we have to fight in all 50 states. Here in South Dakota, in order for me to appear on your ballot, it requires approximately 3,000 petition signatures. If you would like me on South Dakota State Ballot, then please contact the Veterans Party of South Dakota on Facebook, and they will be happy to help you participate in that endeavor to get us on your ballot to be a legitimate option. Absolutely. I was going to ask her questions. I was going to take the camera and have her have good Bye. luck. Um, uh, you guys, I just, like I said, this is an honor, and it, and um, I know that not only on, on behalf of myself, but on behalf of Rev Rider and Rapid Fire Radio, and um, a lot of people that have been paying attention and have met her also, you know, everybody's, they're, 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 they're noticed, and, and, you know, this is something I, I wish that hopefully we can get some more people to maybe come down later and everything. This video will air probably after that because I have to go and download it and everything. But we'll have the announcement on, on Facebook and everything. So please, you guys, please educate yourselves and 
you know, stand for the Constitution, stand for the American people. Christos.